<laughs> Hello to the next session. This one is dealing with analog and board games, and it is my great honor to introduce one of our very own Game with Graz members, Johannes Hartmode. He is gonna uh, talk about the history of board games. Okay, uh, I take a word from here. So, <laughs> <laughs> if it's okay for you. So, um, my talk is Going in the Digital. The long lasting symbiosis of digital and analog games. This is a history which basically covers 3,000 years and I have 10 minutes, so let's make it happen. So, analog games and games in general. So, it's a history that stretches over millennia, which technological progress, literacy, and great came more complex games uh, and gaming systems, like chess comes from uh, ancient Persia, or Go, which uh, originated from Southeast Asia. Uh, which is now spread all over the world. When possible, the digital uh, adaptions of analog games happened almost immediately. I will cover this soon. And there's almost no, almost no limit of what can be done now. So here we have Go. Um, maybe some of you know it, maybe some of you don't. It's, some say it's the Asian chess. It's a strategy game like chess. It's turn-based, but it's way different in, the, in, in its own complexity. But again, it's, it's the oldest um, estima estimations for this game is like 3,000 years. Here we have chess. Yeah, okay, nothing to explain here. And um, this slowly morphed into this, this is war gaming. This originated after um, the Napoleonic, Napoleonic Wars. Um, the rules of engagement and general strategic rules were adapted into a game which was used, especially in Prussia and later in England and even in the United States and France, to teach young military cadets military tactics. And it became a pastime also for aristocrats and the gentlemen and scholars of the time. So, now we make another big jump. Here we have the inventors of Dungeons and Dragons, Gary Gygax and David Arneson. Um, they are both dead now, but what they did is super duper important. Rest in peace, you magnificent gentlemen. And they created Dungeons and Dragons. What is Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, something like this. It's called it's, um, Dungeons and Dragons is pen and paper gaming. It's completely analog and it was the blueprint for a lot of games that exist now. And it's a blueprint, or blueprint also of how games work. So. This is how it looked back then, this is how it looks now. Way cooler and way more ethnically diverse. And um, what you see is um, here, the dice, especially the D20. Super duper important for Dungeons and & Dragons and also super duper important for game development in general. So, a source of inspiration. Pen and paper campaigns directly inspired many big franchises. This is just, this is just some basics that are, really, that are directly um, influenced by, by, by epic campaigns, which is Wasteland, obviously Fallout, the Baldur's Gate series, which is a, a Dungeons and Dragons property, The Expanse, it's not a game, but super great sci-fi series, I can really, really um, recommend it. And I just, I just read today, just by, uh, by chance, um, that it was inspired by, I think it was Grub based uh, an epic uh, pen and paper campaign. The Final Fantasy series, which is directly linked to Dungeons and Dragons, by the way, and to be honest, almost every fantasy RPG ever. I say that. So the analog imprint on digital gaming's uh, DNA. So fantasy tropes and fantasy-based settings as game worlds, this started with Dungeons and Dragons, which was inspired by Wargaming, which also was inspired by Lord of the Rings, kind of obvious. And um, it was a gaming system was created, and the complex world building was done through narration, text, and artwork, which was very basic, but it worked. And it's math slash dice based, and a system to simulate characters, NPCs, combat, the passing of time, and other activities, basically the whole world. It was all put into a mathematical framework, and this mathematical framework, which was operated by DICE, or with DICE, um, may, uh, created a standard that is used everywhere in games. So abilities, attack probabilities, attack power, hit points, mana, spells, etc. So hit points and mana and attack probabilities, this wasn't, this, there, this, there was no standard before that they came up with that, with, uh, because Dungeons and Dragons is basically a wargaming mod. So, what you see here, this is the, um, I think, first edition, I'm pretty sure it's dated from the 80s, and Dungeons and Dragons was invented in 1974. But here you have um, a first edition um, character sheet, very basic, but it covers everything that every other game has. Hit points, attacks, uh, defenses, everything that's normal for us. They came up with it, they implemented for it for the first time. And what's quite interesting, this is Dungeons and Dragons, the video game, which was also created in 1974 at some technical university in the United States. I always forget what it is. But here you see everything is covered. It, of course, the graphics are very, very basic. And this is uh, run on a modern machine. I think back, back then on the old um, screens, it basically looked like shit, I think. But whatever. So you see everything is there. 
And everybody recognizes um, how our character you know, is built, what is there. And now we make another big jump to the other one, um, which is not turn-based, this is real-time. But you see, the basics are there. 20, no, not 20 years. Yeah, 25 years passed, but the DNA didn't really change that much. Now another jump to um, Divinity Original Sin 2. Gaming um, recommendation from my side. Very old school, super good technical framework. And as you see here, you have yeah, the base, like the, the, there's way more to the character and you see the big inventory and stuff like that. But again, the framework, basic DNA, never changed. And now we make another um, jump to Path of Exile, a hugely popular um, action RPG in the vein of Diablo. So it's real time, it's on turn based. You see, um, like this are, what are these? Oh, yeah, these are the, um, the defense, um, defense stats of a character. And again, you have this very, very basic Dungeons and Dragons first edition framework, and 30, 40 years pass, and you have something like this, and this inspires in Path of X or something like this. And I don't know if this is like the current iteration of the web, but this is a skill based system that basically makes the game with some other factors, and, it all, and also something complex like this started with the basic first edition character sheet. So, no matter what you play, it started there. So, the advent of digital gaming in the 70s and 80s. So, it overnight created a billion dollar industry. And this is true. I was uh, really um, quite surprised to read that even in the back in the 80s, and I think late 70s, the American games industry made over one billion dollars back then. And if you um, count into uh, inflation, it's even a crazier number. So it made complex systems and concepts more accessible, but you had to be tech savvy back then to even come in contact with that. But again, it's a huge jump to have it analog and now have it digital. And, um, and you had automation and multimedia depiction. You had sound, you had a graphical overlay, it was all very basic, but where it ended up, you know, we all know that. So it started a chain reaction of technical advancements, yeah, and it created its own genres, sub genres, and standards. I'm not saying that Dungeons and Dragons is the first, is the, is the first ever idea to, to, to create a system to, to um, basically make, make a mathematical system, mathematical system to create something like a game world, but it's the, it's the one system that's stuck. So it really, this technical advancements inspired people. Here we have some super wonky um, late 80s, I think early 90s um, yeah, cyberpunk depictions where real um, digital, digitalization and internet connectivity lead. Yeah, not there. Maybe at least there to the internet. Yeah, also didn't happen. It led there to super powerful small rectangles. And um, yeah, this was the big digitalization, not the huge cyberspace with yeah, weird, weird matrix like systems. And of course, um, gaming worked in tandem. And the idea was to, well, like when people dreamed of, of better gaming systems, better engines, and whatnot. That the idea of like a drone world, yeah, now you can really go into the dragon and the dragon cave and whatever. And maybe it looks something like this, but to be honest, internet connectivity and mass gaming looked something like this, or looks something like this. <laughs> so and I'm not saying this is bad, but this is where that, where it's at. And by the way, I'm a passionate world of Warcraft. This is a, was a huge undertaking to create this game and make it work, and it's still the gold standard. So, what does digitalization even mean today? So, if like my grandmother has a smartphone and she uses Google Maps, is she not a digital wanderer or whatever? So, it's kind of hard to say where does it start, where does it end, but basically it's everywhere and it came in a shape and form that nobody really anticipated. So, gaming was one of the, uh, was one of the big starting points because the people who were interested in games were tech savvy and they pushed it, we all know this. Then, better internet speeds and connectivity changed everything for games. Analog goes the way of the dodo, or does it? Yeah. As far as I see, it never really went away. And the digital saturation, the ma digital saturation, the magic is gone. Of course, we all love video games. We play them online, we play them offline, whatever. But um, internet connectivity and nice graphics and whatnot. This is not the big draw of the late of the late, late uh, 90s. If you some remember the Nintendo um, 64, like now these are ugly block graphics. Back then it was like whoa. Look at this, it's 3D and whatever. And now we all are used to it, which doesn't mean it's bad, but it covers something completely different. So I know that games now and the digital component, you have online communities, digital di distribution, which makes a huge difference. Back then you had to buy books, get some shipping. If you, if you couldn't speak or read English, you had to wait some time to actually get into D&D and whatnot. You have Kickstarter and crowdfunding, which is makes a huge, a huge impact on analog games. Um, you have the haptic experience, 
actually touching something. Of course, you can play in a digital environment, Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, but usually you come together and you have to have the experience, you, you touch, you smell, you see. And this is, yeah, this is something that, that uh, digital gaming still can give you, again, not passion. And you have the power of imagination, which can also really be covered. So imagination, you have one, why don't you use it? And um, people got quite tech savvy and quite imaginative um, on how to implement digital systems into their analog gaming experiences, something like this. Um, friends of mine were talking about it on and off again to build something like this ourselves. But yeah, this makes a huge difference to play like this or to have like this. Um, you have the dice, you have the character sheets, but still you have the, the digital support. But in the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's, it's analog gaming with a digital component. It's analy digital, analy digital, no, analy digital. So now I made the, I made the um, mistake myself. So now we have some notable, expa uh, notable examples. We have Pythor games and Pathfinder. It's um, a Dungeons and Dragons uh, derivation, super successful. And for example, they have um, the second edition of running in a beta, beta, beta. And um, this is something we only know from video games, but now. Um, but in paper, publishers do the same thing and it works great. You have a lot of um, customer communication and yeah, get all the, you get all the uh, good stuff from it. And some of the bad stuff is a toxic community, but they do their stuff just right. And then if pen and paper streaming, which is huge. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast, they have their official Twitch account, they stream, it's super successful, it's really funny to, um, really into entertaining to watch. Or Spitze Stifte from Rocket Beans, it really um, it actually created a hype for pen and paper gaming because they just took this analog concept and just streamed it, made it, made it digital. Um, and yeah, it just works. Uh, you have the current Games Workshop publishing policy and community building. Um, Games Workshop was known for being not very nice to their customers and fans. They made a complete 180 and now they're more successful than ever. You have Fantasy Flight Games, who um, actually strongly implement apps into their um, board games, which also it's still in the beginning, but it works quite well. And some of the board games were actually really well implemented are the XCOM board game with the timer system. Um, you have Descent and Mansion of Madness, which are, which are both done by Fantasy Flight Games. Yeah, and it just works. There's still a lot of stuff to learn. But uh, yeah, in, instead of the digital games industry just pushing uh, analog games out, it, it, it kind of merged. And I think it's a good thing to see. And yeah, thanks for listening. Try out some new and old analog games and follow me on Twitter if you're interested. I'm done. Thank you very much.